Hey everybody, so one thing to tell you all before we get into it is Pain Miss is going on. It's that yearly thing where I discount my Patreon's yearly rate as low as it'll go, and anyone that pledges yearly, no matter what the tier, will get a special Pain Miss card delivered right to their door. And it's, um, you get all the stuff on top of it, you get all the benefits, even the bottom tier gets it. Uh, that includes, like, also with that, you get voting rights on videos, you get access to the updates, you can uh, talk in the Q&As, all that good stuff. And it's just as low as it'll go, go for it. So unfortunately, as some of you have surmised, it's been a rough year for Immersive Sims. Uh, a lot of games have been delayed, a lot of games have been uh, rescheduled or restructured entirely. Some games have been all but cancelled, and uh, out of the four games I was looking forward to uh, getting releases of this year, I think only one of those four games came out, and it was kind of a rough launch. Um, we did have a few announcements this year, and a lot of people coming and saying, hey, I'm going to start working on something, but that doesn't mean much in the long run, because like you can say you're working on something, but... We're going to talk about that a bit more later on in the video, but there's a huge difference between making meaningful progress towards the end of a project and keeping on showing glossy little vertical slices of what you're doing and just building towards nothing in particular. So we're going to have four categories this year. I think they might have been the same as um, last year's, but we're going to do what's released. Uh, spoiler, that's going to be a short one. Uh, what is still in progress and we're expecting to see in the near future. Uh, what I have effectively written off. Some of these games might actually be games that come out next year. Some of these games might never come out. But effectively, because of the circumstances around these particular games, I'm just not really paying attention to them anymore because um, it's not worth it. It's like they delay and delay and delay and they keep on like missing their own milestones to the point where it's like, I'm sorry, but I can't keep giving you attention at this rate because it makes me look bad. And also, it's just so disappointing. Like, hey guys, check out this cool game. Oh wait, it's not coming out this year. Oh wait, they've reset development again. Oh wait, nothing's happening on that front. I'm sorry. But moving swiftly forward, we finally got new stuff, which there are a couple new things that are coming up that I really hope to be seeing in the next year or so. And nearly knock over my drinky. Uh, in the previous recording, I spent so long under these uh, lights I've got here that I did get a little dehydrated. So, uh, trying to take preventative measures. So, let's talk about what came out this year. Um, this is going to be a short one. Uh, of all the games I expected in 2021 to release, we had uh, Deathloop, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, uh, the System Shock remake, and Parapedia. Out of all those, Deathloop is the only one that made it to 1.0. Um, Parapedia, we're going to talk about that in the what's coming up. It's, um, I guess slightly different circumstances. I'm um, not too, like, upset at them, like, so to speak. It's uh, more of a situation of where they, uh, really expanded out development, but we're not in the coming forward, um, section yet. Everything else has either been delayed indefinitely or pushed to 2022. Uh, first one to come out was a wild card that I wasn't really expecting, Cruelty Squad. As some of you know, Cruelty Squad was like kind of teased at in late 2020, uh, had an early access release in January, and it actually came out a bit early. They were originally uh, planning to do like a July, I believe, release, and they got 1.0 out in June, which is very, very impressive. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Cruelty Squad is the sewer core, like cyberpunk dystopian game, where you play as an Uber driver of murder. And uh, it's got a lot of like big uh, dystopian depression energy. It's just pure meme fuel. It's personally, Cruelty Squad is my game of the year. It, uh, when all the other AAA companies and a lot of other games just fell flat on their face this year or kept delaying, Cruelty Squad delivered. It's uh, on top of like all the initial intended things. They also put a bunch of joke things in there. They threw in a stock market simulation, which is now a key part of the game. Uh, they threw in fishing, they threw in drivable cars, they threw in the ability to purchase property. Like, you can finally live the dream of owning your own home in Cruelty Squad. And uh, I'm just really happy that um, Consumer Soft Products was doing so well and really hustled to get the game out. 
because outside of that, we did not have much this year. The other thing we had this year, which also got delayed, but it was delayed within 2021, was Deathloop. Deathloop was for me personally a great time for what I've played. Um, it's a huge bummer. Immediately after I made my early impressions video as my hair continues to get in my face because I'm not tying it up and I'm... All the bugs started happening right after I made the video. But luckily, most of the stuff has been patched out. It's running a lot better now, at least for me, but that's big. It works on my machine. Syndrome right there. So that doesn't mean much, but nonetheless, it's a fun time. They really did a good job subverting the trope of like constantly save scumming in immersive Sims, where if you mess up, it's cool. You literally, the entire timeline resets at the end of the level. So you can just get creative. It really, I found myself playing in a lot of ways where I normally don't play in cruel, in not cruel, in death loop, where I'm usually like a stealthy assassin type. I go around with a silenced pistol, really take advantage of that stealth attack bonus and just like silently remove people from the map. But in death loop, because like, oh, whatever, it just resets the next day. I did a lot of loud approaches. I did a lot of like high mobility approaches and I had a blast. Also the kick, the kick is phenomenal. I love the kick. It's, um, I do plan on doing a full standalone video talking about death loop and possibly addressing the so-called curse of the immersive sim. Probably sometime in 2022 when I have time for these things. But uh, nothing is set in stone as things have been really tumult, like for everywhere lately. And stuff keeps on getting delayed for various reasons, including my own videos. So now we've talked about the two immersive sims that came out in the year 2021. Let's talk about what is still in progress and I'm keeping an eye on. First of which is Parapedia. As some of you know, I made a video about the Parapedia demo in the name of uh, also promoting their Kickstarter because I'm somewhat friends. Well, I don't even know how you caught my internet friends. I'm on friendly terms with um, everyone that's involved with the development of Parapedia. And they were some of the first indie devs, immersive sim devs that really gave me the time of day when I was coming up immediately after like making a big M sim video. So, um, yeah, I was more than willing to not only pledge myself, but make a video talking about the game. And uh, in the meantime, they've added a lot of major mechanics in addition to their Kickstarter, like the ledge grab system, which is a ton of fun and a really unique mechanic that lets you do a lot of stuff, like a lot of mobility things. They've added a whole lot of guns on top of old Warsaw Pack guns. One of the Kickstarter goals, which they're actively working on, are uh, there's now going to be a lot of NATO firearms, Arapedia, like with a grappling hook and a bunch of other things. But Parapedia is very much a um, actively in development game. The Kickstarter uh, says it's going to come out late 22, if I recall correctly, which is why it's still on my radar list. Because on top of it, it's also a matter of um, like they have more people and they've set a date, which is what I really care about right now. Because uh, we're going to get to my opinions on the word soon in it. So uh, another thing that is actually still in progress and is currently the only thing I'm holding on to outside of Parapedia is Weird West, which on top of uh, Rafael Colantonio uh, overtly saying that yes, it's going to have immersive sim vibes in it, but even though it's presented more like a CRPG and we usually assert M sims with a first or third person perspective, but it's coming out in January, it's next month, which I'm really excited for to have an M sim to sink my teeth into. And um, it looks great. Apparently it's going to be like three intersecting storylines. Can you? Yeah, there we go. It's three intersecting storylines and they're just gonna let you do pretty much anything. It's going to be big Imsim energy from what I've seen. There's a lot of chaos that can be caused and it looks like a good time. And then we've got Gloomwood, which is also still in the works. Uh, Taffer King has been giving a steady drip feed of like mechanics he's showing off on his YouTube channel, which he actively updates. They put out a new uh, like trailer vertical slice gameplay demonstration on, uh, I forget what thing, but they, they, they did the usual thing like, oh no, new blood got snubbed again. And they made their big stink about it. Um, I think it's an act, I don't know. I can't say for certain, I don't know what's going on. Ever since like, what was it? in the before times when uh, the PC gaming show entirely forgot to show wood. And on top of that, 
they put the wrong URL in and they also, uh, they made it really misleading, looking like it was going to be another very popular Just got people really pissed off about it. Oh God, I think I was too far away from the mic in that one. I'm really, I had to re, this, I'm doing this because I got too depressed and I had the mic too far away from my face. So if I sound too loud, obviously, if I start clipping, I'm going to be bummed. But, um... It's still, it's the same news as last year and the year before that, where, oh, it's next year, maybe. Soon, TBA. And I don't know what else to say, aside from the fact that, like, it's got that same demo. Uh, they've patched the demo a few times, I believe. But there's not much on that front. Like, I believe, uh, I think I saw Taffer King tweeting about QA. But I don't know definitively how far along they are in the video. Or not in the, in the game. Like, where are they completion-wise? And that's also... Quick correction here. I uh, misremembered said tweets. It was actually uh, Taffer King tweeting about debugging sound propagation, which, while is arguably a part of QA, does not exactly insinuate that, yeah, we're in the QA mode of uh, development. Apologies for that. Uh, let's keep moving. I've noticed a lot of devs get, especially indies, get really sensitive about that topic of, like, how close are you to being done? And some get real prickly about it, so I don't want to push the subject. But at the same time, it's like, we've been in, oh yeah, it's got to be soon. For like three years. Soon is not three years. And I I don't mean to call anyone out in particular. But no, no hold up. I'm going to talk about this in the segment. Because I have it later on down here in the cards. So I'm just going to hold that thought for now. And uh, System Shock 3. Uh, while Other Side Entertainment has been extremely silent about things. In fact, the only things they really tweeted in relation to System Shock or at all was, I believe they talked, they messaged like on Twitter saying, hey, we're looking for a senior developer and one other thing. But we have seen effectively nothing of System Shock 3. The oh, I just to realized I totally forgot. Uh, segue back into what's still coming out. Uh, the Bioshock sequel, which uh, we're going to talk about that in another aspect uh, in a bit, but that's still going on. Uh, we haven't seen anything. However, there has been a quote unquote leak, which uh, I'll believe it when I see it, that alleges that it's going to be called Bioshock Isolation and it will be revealed in Q1 of 2022. But I do not trust that. Uh, just too many people are believing too much crap when it comes to leaks. And uh, that's where we're at right now is we haven't heard anything, but due to the pedigree, we've got Bioshock 2 vets working on it, head up by Kelly Gilmore, the person who was the head of XCOM World of the Chosen. I have no reason to believe that anything bad is happening with the latest Bioshock game. So that's still in development. I uh, I might edit this, but um, yeah, we don't know. And now we get to the part where uh, we talk about what I have completely written off. Like what I am no longer expecting or I am no longer looking forward to in a sense but there's a chance it still might come out. But you're really, it's like, yeah, I'll believe it when I play it. First on the list, as some of you know, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, effectively written off. As some of you know, um, all of Hard 2 Labs has been removed from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Uh, they did not use the word fired in their announcement, but the Paradox announcement effectively worded it as um, Artsuit Labs is no longer going to be working on Bloodlines 2. We are going to find a new developer and uh, this is delayed indefinitely. We are no longer putting a date out. And um, while I believe they have said they found a new developer, they have not told us who it is. And additionally, in another interview with Paradox's Brass, or maybe it was like a shareholder brief or something, they said that they actively made the decision not to cancel it, which means apparently things were so bad with whatever was happening at Hardsuit Labs that just completely scrapping the project was a legitimate option. And kudos to them for saying, no, we're not going to cancel it. And allegedly they have a new dev, but they won't tell us who. But we effectively know nothing. We don't know how far the game actually is. Uh, we don't know... Um, how much of Hardsuit Labs' work is going to be kept. Um, we don't know anything. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if whoever is working on Bloodlines 2 has to effectively restart development. 
Because, well, Hard Suit Labs said in, like, cons and stuff that, yeah, it's almost done. It's really close. Like, we're getting all this stuff done. Hard Suit Labs also was removed from the project for whatever reasons Paradox had. I want to be careful with my wording here and not accidentally say something that isn't true. But the fact of the matter is, Paradox saw fit to say, no, you are not working on this project anymore. So that's written off. Ironically, they are also, uh, because they're no longer soliciting pre-orders, um, they're also like no questions asked refunds. But for me, because I'm a sucker, it has been so long since I pre-ordered Bloodlines 2 that I can't get my money back because the credit card I used to order it, I had to cancel that credit card just because like there was a chance it might have been breached. Like I think I like lost the card or something. So I called and canceled it. So that particular card doesn't exist anymore, so I can't get my money back. And also, uh, this one's going to come as um, a bit of a blow to some, but I've effectively written off the System Shock remake. This is not to say that, like, it's fully in dev hell and it's never going to come out. It's just, with all the delays it's had, it has failed my three delays rule. I have a three strikes rule for delays. Um, one delay means, okay, um... That's kind of a bummer, but it's reassuring that you care about the quality of your product and you are willing to delay. Two delays means I officially have my doubts about the competence of your production because you have now repeatedly failed to properly estimate goals. You uh, maybe are getting a little bit of scope creep. Maybe you are also um, just not being strict enough with your own development pipeline. So I am now worried after the third delay it's kind of hard to see it against my uh, shirt here. I effectively take all expectations I had about your game, so much as launching, so much as being a really cool game when it comes out, and I just put my expectations, like I lower the bar, right to the floor. It's like, if it comes out, cool. But I expect exactly nothing from this game at this point. I'll just be happy if it boots. And that is currently the story of System Reshock is... Um, We've had the ump team's delay. I have lost track of how many delays. I know at one point the game was entirely restarted. I know that like they clearly, uh, other, not other side, um, Night Dive did not reach their Kickstarter window. But as you know, this year, they initially said, summer 2021, it's happening, get ready. And summer 2021 came and went. And even in fall of 2021 for a minute, it still said summer 2021. And now it's, um, that's why it's like, I'm sorry, but this, that's the last straw for me. I'll love, I'll gladly play it when it comes out. And I'm still, I'm pretty sure it's still a when and not an if, because on the Kickstarter page, they released an update insinuating that we have gotten into QA. And uh, they show a lot of pretty stuff, a lot of cool looking screenshots of all the assets they're making and all these insider things. But uh, we've been down this road before where cool screenshots do not make a cool game. And we have only played, I think, that one vertical slice level, the demo that, that I have, like, footage of that demo from, like, I think it's 2017. Like, it was so long ago, it's in 720p in my archives. Um, and we just, we've kept replaying Medical Deck. And we haven't seen anything else. I, I think there might be a cyberspace in there. I don't know. I have not like really looked at the demos recently after the most recent one came out with all of medical, but we haven't seen anything else. So it might just be, oh, this is really polished, but everything else is kind of, I don't know. Maybe it will be an absolute banger where everything is super polished, but I don't know. And I have reason to keep my expectations low after so many delays and so many setbacks. So that is in the written off category, which I guess we can further extrapolate as like, Written off does not mean dev hell. It just means like, I'm not holding my breath anymore. And um, another thing, I'm not even sure I'm going to be mentioning this. You know what? Yeah, there's another game that I am officially no longer talking about. And if you know what it is, it's cool. I might explain what it is on, say, uh, the Patreon or something. And then we've got, uh, actually, no, you know what? I'm not going to talk about this either. I'll mention it in a little, but another game that I covered last year uh, Graven, I realize now it's kind of not really an immersive sim. It's more like a boomer shooter with a few like um, mechanics like that. So it's just not appropriate to talk about here. I know apparently some stuff is going on with development and people seem to be upset, but I'm not going to delve too deep into that because I just think uh, maybe that this isn't the place for it. Then uh, what is this here? We got two more. 
Uh, I have officially written off whatever the heck Ken Levine is working on. At this point, it is my belief that if he could have, he would have. Whatever it is. And additionally, when I theorize that either like when 2K was hiring someone to um, come in and finish up development, and it was either like, oh, they're just looking for someone to put a bow on it, or B, oh, they need a rainmaker because nothing is happening on this front and they're starting to get really upset. It might be the latter because uh, we have still seen nothing. We have seen effectively nothing. In fact, it is amazing that no one in Levine's team over at Ghost Story has made any sort of leak. And finally, one last game that I have effectively written off is, it really, it depresses me to say this, but I have effectively written off the Jensen trilogy. I don't think it's happening anymore. Where has shown again and again that they really, they just are a little too shy to make the final installation. And fortunately, but unfortunately, Guardians of the Galaxy is a pretty good game. And maybe they might make Eidos their Marvel house now because they've shown they can do it. And while I'm happy Eidos is still getting games, I, at this point, I have reason to believe we're never going to get closure for the Jensen trilogy because it's just been so long. Uh, they keep on saying, oh, Deus Ex isn't gone. It's waiting their turn. Please just keep giving us money. We promise we'll go to Disneyland next year if you're good. Please, please just keep giving us money. And at this point, I don't trust them anymore. And also, if they start development now, it might be so long that what we get as the final part of the Jensen trilogy might just be too different. It might be like one of those like before the pandemic, all those super belated sequels like the Super Troopers 2 or like the Bad Santas or the like, yeah, it's been 20 years, but we're going to make a sequel because we need nostalgia money. And while Eidos Montreal has shown again and again, they make great games. It's just been so long and we have so little reason to believe that where Enix is willing to take risks like they used to. They're just overly safe and something like an immersive sim is a big risk to make. So... I hate to say this, but I don't think we're ever getting the final part of the Jensen trilogy. And what's coming up? In uh, recent times, we have had uh, one game that particularly catches my attention in the announcements, uh, Core Decay. It kind of looks like a very much more like in the vein of Deus Ex, those individual augments and stuff like that, but much more faster paced, much more shooter-y. And um, I'm really excited for that. I'll put some screenshots up, but it's still like too soon to really say anything definitively. It's just been announced this year or at least formally given a trailer and given some attention to it this year. And finally, I'm just going to condense a bunch of them into one segment and say a million little demos that developers keep on messaging me, asking me to play and make videos of. And I'm really sorry about this, but I have to tell them, no, this is a demo. I should have been more clear about the Parapedia video and why I was making that. That was to do a personal favor to some people that I like have a strong bond to. And also that demo was very long. Like it was several hours worth of content where most of these demos are like, I'm not even sure you could call it a demo. This is more of a proof of concept. And people keep on asking me about this. And these are games that like, they all have like a super like big old TBA or soon attached to it. It's like, what do I tell my people that, oh yeah, here's a 20 minute demo. They may make it. They may just keep on chasing butterflies for the next five years and never come out. So I just, I got to tell people, I'm sorry, but I can't cover this. Don't have enough content for me to make a decent video of. And if anything, it would be a disservice to make a video about your demo right now or whatever you have. Because you're a 20 minute demo on a pile of screenshots on Twitter. That's not a game. Like that, yeah, it's cool. It's fun to get hyped and look at fun little projects that are coming out soon. But soon is not a release date. And oh, wow, we're already into the next one. This is when I started getting so depressed previously. So I'm going to start talking louder and watching my audio monitor like a hawk. But um, I'm getting frustrated, especially with the indie scene. And I'm sick and tired of the word soon, especially when you go soon, TM. You're not Valve. You are not Golden Age Valve. Valve isn't Golden Age Valve anymore. And frankly, at this point, I feel like the word soon is insulting to the player. And it might just be, again, I might be out of line here, but I'm starting to believe that soon is indie speak for 
We have no time or project management skills and we are easily distracted by adding fun new mechanics that do not progress the game. And I know that level design is hard and there's a lot of backdoor stuff that goes on in a game that is not glossy enough to show off on Screenshot Saturday, but it's getting very frustrated when year after year, like I first started really paying attention to M Sims in 2016 and 2017 and started working up to the big M Sim video in 2019 at around late 2017. And for a lot of these games, it's been the same story since then. It's like, oh yeah, it'll be out next year. Next year rolls around. Oh, it'll be out next year. And next year rolls around again. It'll be out next year. And then pandemic, everyone gets a free pass. 2020, everyone gets a free pass, which I'm still a believer of. But here we are at the end of 2021. And well, yes, we are not back to the so-called normal and we might never be back to normal because stupid people keep on being stupid. Um. At this point, I feel like the pandemic might have been a non-issue for some of these people in a sense where it's like, you wouldn't have finished the game without the pandemic. And that's getting frustrated because I can't champion your game if you never finish your game. I know some of you call me the so-called immersive simp, but I, I need full games to cover. I can't make these big, cool 30, 45 hour long videos on a 20 minute demo in a bunch of screenshots. It's, I can't do that. That would, as some of you know, I have been burned before talking about unfinished games where I got caught holding the bag because I trusted developers like on a couple occasions now. And uh, while I still believe in some of those games and some of them were like, it's just a genuine misunderstanding. I'm really gun shy about talking about unfinished games and demos that have no meaningful signs of completion. And it really feels like a lot of the indies now have no longer become focused on finishing their games, but instead on making glossy vertical slice demos to generate hype on Twitter, Itch, and Steam. And it becomes this dopamine loop of, ooh, people are excited for my game because I made a demo. Oh no, people aren't paying attention anymore. I'll update the demo. Oh no, people aren't take, paying attention anymore. I'll release a new demo. And it keeps going and going and going. And you keep on chasing butterflies, putting in new cool mechanics because like, I don't know, Dave Oshkar retweets stuff sometimes when he gets into M Sims for a hot minute. We saw that back in September and October was like him digging through Arcane's catalog. But if you keep on doing what other people are doing because it looks cool, unfortunately, by the time you finally come out with your game, if you come out at all, all the stuff that you thought was hot and trendy that you kept on delaying yourself to put in is gonna be stale and boring by the time it comes out. So what have you accomplished aside from indefinitely delaying your game? And I feel so bad about talking about all this and calling it out, but sometimes demos will come out years before the game is anywhere near finished. And while I don't claim to be a master of game design, production, and promotion, I understand that a demo is usually something that comes out shortly before the game's release window to whet people's appetites for the game. So if you release a demo years before your game is anywhere near done, people are going to forget about the game entirely by the time you're actually done with it. And that's it. And oh, on top of that, uh, your demo will possibly be no longer remotely indicative of what's actually in the game because all those years, like two, three years is a very long time in development and like ideas don't work anymore. So you have to scrap them. Sometimes entire new systems replace old systems because you thought this was going to work really well. But later on in the game, you realize, oh, this is actually kind of a hindrance to the overall experience. So you implement an entirely new system. So the demo you have is nothing like the original game. So now you have this old demo that people entirely forgot about by the time your game's ready to launch, but it also is nothing like the game anymore. So when people get hyped and go back to redownload the demo and then they play your final game like a few months later when it actually comes out, they're like, wait, this wasn't what I was expecting. What the hell? And it's still, it's just so sad and disappointing that like you're, we're all hooked on this dopamine loop of constantly delaying or not even like putting dates on our games, but just perpetually being soon and telling me, oh yeah, it's going to be next year. Keep an eye out on it. And then it next year comes around and it's still soon. And I'm just stuck in this loop of demos and soons and maybes. And I really want to talk about your cool games and all the stuff you're making, but you don't make enough content.
and for me to talk about. So I have to turn my back to some indies or tell them, no, I'm sorry. I really appreciate you giving me this insider build key, but you do not have enough content to talk about because people keep on like, I've seen people that are putting seasonal updates into their demos. Like it's one thing to patch. It's one thing to like, put new mechanics in and maybe have your demo be more like an early access beta build where like you test things out. But we've been getting the same, like since like 2017, 2018, the same handful of people going, oh yeah, it's gonna be next year. Oh yeah, play the demo, it's gonna be next year. Hey, you're bored of the demo? I made a new demo. And I feel like I'm talking in circles and I'm being really mean right now, but this is where I'm stuck in. And I admit, I am part of the problem, especially after making that video about Parapedia, which I admit, if I could go back and do it again, I would do it again. But this time I'll be much more clear that I was doing it as a favor and also to help drum up promotion for their Kickstarter. And it's, uh, now I have to put this really close because I'm, I'm talking all week again and getting bummed. I feel like I'm just completely burning the people that have also like had such a wonderful mutualistic relationship with me. But at the same time, I have to come out and say I am part of this problem of we are perpetually promoting games without seeing meaningful progress and results on the final product. And it's not incentivizing developers, particularly indies, who finish their games. And they just get stuck in the same dopamine loop. And arguably, on a similar, like, level of culpability, I'm guilty of this too on many respects. How many times have I delayed the Deus Ex video? The Human Revolution 100,000 subscriber video? I forget, but by my own rules, you should probably take your expectations and put it on the floor, because I keep delaying it and I have a clear sign that I do not understand the scope of what I'm making, because, like a lot of these devs, I get worried, like, oh, I should add this, I should add this, what if I forget to cover this? and also potentially being averse like nitpicks and all that stuff that I see so many developers fall into like that reverse feedback loop of like anti-dopamine. So I feel bad. It's like, I also, I do the same thing. Like I have a writer's group. I write like fantasy novel stuff for fun. And sometimes I'll do that where like I go to continue a chapter and make more work. But as I reread the current, like what I have of a chapter, I start changing and fiddling things and it never gets done. And I'm like, oh, I, I thought I was going to write five pages tonight, but no, I, I wrote zero pages, but I did change around the mechanics in a few sentences. And we just all got to hunker down and finish our games. And finally, one thing that I'm frustrated about, but it's not related to this issue of a near perpetual feedback loop on games is the rise of what I am calling foes. Um, to define a faux sim, I'm saying it's something that like puts on the dress of an immersive sim, likes to use 0451 and oh, there are many ways you can complete your task. But in reality, does not really have emergent gameplay or the design philosophies that make a game an immersive sim. And um, I have to admit a good example of this is the Bioshock series, which I talk about in videos like this because I kind of grandfather it in. I kind of like, because of its pedigree, and the fact that while it is not a completely emergent game, there's still a lot of ways you can accomplish your goals with your abilities. But Bioshock is very much a post sim. And on the same note, another developer who I very much enjoy their game and I'm going to make a video of also emailed me with keys like, oh yeah, do you think our game is an immersive sim? Do you think it's like it's like the Strife and the um, like Deus Ex games? Like, and it was absolutely not. And I don't even want to name this stuff because I don't want to be mean because I enjoyed their game. But adding some RPG elements to your boomer shooter does not make a game an immersive sim. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that lately. I think it might have something to do with that much like how the pixel platformer, the wave came and went, like the revival of pixel platformers. I believe that the build engine aesthetic, the GZ Doom first person boomer shooter style game wave is starting to crest. And a lot of people who had similar things were like, they haven't finished their game yet. They're like, oh crap, this genre isn't gonna be popular by the time my game comes out. So I feel like a number of people are trying to associate their games with immersive Sims to try and get that street cred and not get stuck in a trend that came and went before their game was even out. And I see that a lot. There's some games I've seen where 
it was never referred to as an immersive sim or a merchant at all until like Deathloop came out. And they're like, oh yeah, this is a do whatever you want to do this, do that. And they released a demo and you like have literally one vent in one area I can crawl through that was blatantly designed for you to use. And every opportunity where you could do something emergent, your emergent gameplay boils down to, do you want to melee people? Or do you want to use a rather quickly implemented stealth system that you can obviously see where exactly you are in a stealth field with minimal line of sight? And you can occasionally throw things at people. We put an exploding barrel here. Cool, isn't it? It's like, I get what you mean. And I've looked through like your Twitter history and like your influences, and it seems you are very clearly, like you like immersive sims and you want to make one, but what you have given me so far, like what you have put out as a demo, is not nearly what I consider an immersive sim. It's more along the games of like the outer worlds where yeah, there are a lot of ways you can do things in that game, but there's not a sort of make your own fun type deal. There are many paths, but all these paths are things that like you cannot stray from what a developer intended. And that's not what makes an immersive sim. And there's a bunch of games like these. And again, I don't want to name names. I don't want to overtly call anyone out because like, I realize at the point, even if like things have slowed down for a minute, I am a very influential force. Immersive Sims. Some of you like consider me some kind of supreme arbiter of what is and isn't an immersive sim. And I don't want to take a dump on anyone's aspirations because they don't meet my criteria. And I don't want to accidentally stifle someone's game or discourage them because like they want to be something, but they haven't realized it yet, or they haven't figured out how to implement it yet, but they're still talking about it like it is because that's what they envision, envision the game as. And um, unfortunately, it's like, I really hope that the people that do say, oh yeah, we're going to go all four, five, one. I really hope you do genuinely start making your games more immersion and open-ended and it's kind of like the opposite problem with um, the people that came out with purpose-built immersive sims that intended that from the first place where you need to like actually make this stuff. You got to add these feet. Whereas um, for the people that are making immersive sims like from the outset, you got to like hunker down and just focus on what originally made your game your game and stop chasing the butterflies. You got to just finish the game. I know level design apparently is a real stuck, sucky thing to do. But we can't live off soon and demos. We need the games. Um, I was really excited for like an indie revival of the immersive sim, but at this point, I'm starting to believe that that's not going to be a thing because um, people either can't finish their games or the people that are putting out finished games are clearly not immersive sims. And they're just saying that because they know that no one cares about boomer shooters for a minute. Like, yeah, obviously people still do who care about the games, but it's nowhere near what it was like when games like Dusk first hit the scene and blew everyone's mind and made everyone want those kind of games again. So, um, in order to combat this, I'm adopting a couple new rules. Uh, as of next year, we're putting these rules into effect. We maybe will repeal them back if it doesn't work so well. But as of now, for immersive sims on this channel, uh, 1.0 or no video. I need a fully released game that I can completely talk about before I start a video on your game because I can't just live off demos here and we can't just keep on talking about the same demos that we've been playing since like 2018 that never go anywhere. And um, it's gonna suck, but I've looked into it and there are plenty of games I can cover that are fully released. Yeah, some of them are older, some are ones that I never got around to, but we could go at least one immersive sim video a month for all of 2022 and never touch a demo. And second rule is if you don't have a release date, I'm not talking about you at all uh, going forward. Like I know we've talked about a few games that are soons, but that's how it's gonna be going forward after this video is if you don't have a release date, I don't talk about you because it's one thing to set your date and then have to delay it. But if you're just perpetually like using the word soon as a security blanket for like not pushing yourself to finish your game, much like how I was actively part of the problem, like covering like demos and like not rewarding meaningful progress on your game by like fawning over demos. Like that's also being a part of the problem if you're not working towards your game and you're not setting goals with yourself. And I know that is a very hard thing to do, 
But it's been so many years now that we've been saying, oh, next year's going to be the year that I'm starting to not believe that anymore. I, I think I'm going to say it like, there's not going to be a year. There's just going to be a time frame when people realize, oh, people don't care about our demos anymore. We want final games. And they finally push themselves to make the final game. If you have all these fun mechanics you can do, put them in a DLC. Make an expansion. If you want to be all retro throwback, make expansions like we used to have in games where you add in all these fun new mechanics. Because it seems like a lot of times we put in these mechanics and there's a certain game that I keep thinking about that also has the word simulator in it, which I absolutely do not want to compare you all to because that would be an absolute blow below the belt to so much as say that. But it really feels like we just keep on chasing glossy mechanics and never making meaningful progress to finish our games. And so if that's the case, as of now, I'm not going to make a video about your game if you do not have a version 1.0. And I'm not going to talk about your game in any respect unless you have a set release date or at the very least a window, like say this month of this year. I'm not going to do quarters because quarters are way too vague, but um, those are the rules now. We're going to see how that works for 2022. I've got plenty of immersive sims to cover until we get to 2023. And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I wish this was a happier video. I was actually, like I said earlier, so depressed while talking about the video last time I recorded this that I was mumbling into the mic too much and it did not pick up most of my audio. But we got to be firm with this. So that's it. That's all I got for today. I'm sorry this video is how it is. I'd like to remind you all, if you'd like to revel in the pain with me, pain miss is going on. Yearly patron discounts are as low as they go, and you get this fun, exciting card with the uh, Patreon pledge on top of all the benefits. The Deus Ex video is coming. It should be out two weeks from now. Uh, I can't push it back any farther. I know this is a setback, but um, lucky for me, I'm actually skipping a couple weeks of the gym, even though I'm a fat piece of lard, because um, I hurt my leg and I need to let that heal. So I'll have more time. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for you all to see that video. It'll be literally like six, seven months. It's actually hitting 100,000, but we're going to do it. Thank you all so much for um, listening. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please enjoy this cat video. Sir, why were you on the shoe rack? You are not shoes. You knocked over one of my boots. What are you doing? Put this boot back. Why are you knocking over the shoes? <laughs> you are not a shoe. I'm gonna put on these flip flops. And you're stealing hair ties again. What's up with that? Hey, I'm up here. Uh, there's no help. There's shoes and hair ties. You are just completely absorbed. It's like, how do I stay in this shoe rack, but also get the hair tie? Man, what is your deal? You're being a silly. Also, stop screaming at like 4 a.m. We're not gonna feed you. Both your mother and I now have to have spray bottles by our nightstands for your antics, because you're rude. It's not nice to be rude. And also, we're worried we might eat this and we'd have to do an exploratory on you. We don't want that. That's not nice. No hair tie for now.